Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. I am so excited because today is the first day of the Queen Me series. Five simple yet essential tips for the single queen. Now, when God had given me this series, y'all, it was for the Christian single woman that has a desire to be whole, healthy, and a balanced woman of God. Okay? Now, you may or may not have the desire to get married, but I'm focusing on my single girls who they believe they have a call to marriage. Now, it doesn't exclude those who are not, but this is something very special to help you cultivate yourself as a young woman and to be in alignment with who God is calling you to be and what he's calling you to do. So if you're not familiar with how I roll, every other week I do a series on my podcast and each time I provide a free ebook for you so that you can follow along. Well, this series is no different, but this series is actually special. Something special for my girls, for my ladies, because I know that so many of you have expressed to me and, and even myself, I've been you know, constantly trying to learn and, and, and learn more about myself just as a woman, who God wants me to be um, as a wife. So just preparing for those things ahead of time. So with this particular ebook, I added two special things. I added call to action goal sheets. So you want to print this one out instead of just saving a PDF, because what you want to do is you'll print it and you got to fill out your goals. You have goals for each day that you have to set and you have to actively work toward these goals. That's why I call them call to action goals because you've got to get it moving. You've got to start setting things in place so you're not just talking about it, but you're being about it. You're not just you're not just so deep and so top heavy in the spirit. You have to balance yourself out as a woman. You know, I'm going to tell you, this has hap- this happened to me when I first came into the things of God years ago. I was just too focused on doing all of the Jesus' spiritual things. I, I talked about Jesus and everything. There is nothing wrong with that, but you will find if you do not balance yourself out, not only will you begin to turn people off and you will miss an opportunity to bring somebody to Christ, but you'll be missing the point that God wants you to be cultivated. God knows that you have to live your life. Even when he gives you promises and you praying for promises, you know, so many single women, we get so caught up. Oh, God said, that's my husband. You're losing your mind praying for this person. And you're forgetting to take care of things, handling your business. You're sporadically handling your business. No, 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 no. That is why we are talking this week. Brass tacks, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Because we got to be balanced as women, y'all. As women of God, we have to learn how to illuminate God in everything that we do, but we still have to be ourselves. And there, God knows that we are human. We don't have to, we don't have to be someone that we're not when we are operating in the things of God. We don't, but we also realize that you got to finesse that thing the way God is telling, telling you to in each moment. You know, some things are just inappropriate because the timing is off. If you do things in and out of season and in and out of the wrong times, you're going to miss God and you're going to miss opportunities to bring people to God. Like, for instance, remember in the Bible when God told Lot's wife if she looked back, she was going to turn into a pillar of salt. She looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Now, maybe the day before that happened, if she was walking and she turned around and looked back, and she was going across town and she stopped and looked back, she wasn't going to turn into a pillar of salt. Because at that time, God had not made the mandate about where they were staying and what it meant to look back. But on this particular day, he's like, okay, look, you might have looked back yesterday, but you can't today. When you leave today, you can't come back. You can't look back. So that's my point of telling you we can always keep God in us because that's the whole point of why I have this series because we're Christian women. 
But we want to make sure that we are balanced. We have to make sure that we are not becoming obsessive about things that God does not want us to focus on at this time. We have to work on cultivating, being balanced women of God, because what happens is while we're preparing for a mate, your true personality begins to blossom while you're balanced in the things of God. You're not hitting people over the head with a Bible, but then you're not denying Jesus either because you don't want to do that. You don't want to be either extreme. You want to be right there, balanced, whole, and you're able to convey who God is in a nice, healthy way. You can even bring an atheist to Christ. Okay? But then at the same time, you never dumb it down the word of God. You never acting like you got to be quiet about God. No, 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 no. I'm not saying any of that. But you will find if you read your word, because you'll find these little things in the word. Esther is an excellent example of what I'm talking about. You have to be balanced. You just can't say and do certain things. You think it's cool, but it's not. She even knew in that story, hey, I have to wait for such a time as this. So even that's mentioned in the word, but it's also going to be something that I highlight. So you have to listen this week because I actually illuminate that scripture on one particular day. And I don't want you to miss it. And I really go in depth about it. So with that being said, if you haven't, make sure that you hit the link below this podcast and download your Queen Me ebook with the call to action goal sheets and your level up questions. And y'all, I'll tell you this. I'm so happy about this next thing. This this is a very, very special thing. I added this segment to this series because I thought it was so paramount for those of you ladies who are listening that want to be married. You want to be, you know, married, you want to have children. This is this is a, an amazing segment and it's called the married moment. And I do it at the end of each day. And basically, I talk to married women and I say, hey, listen, if there's anything you wish you would have known that you could have worked on while you were single, that you that you realize, hey, I'm married, I wish I would have did this, what would those things be? So these women gave me some incredible advice and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. We're going to unpack it. It'll just be a quick little married moment. So again, I want to encourage you if you have a... um. If you have a notebook and a pen, make sure you take notes and you can jot down what the married moments are, even if you're taking notes with with the um, actual um, series. But in addition to that, you may just want to have like a little separate journal preparing for marriage and you can list those tips in there. Or for me, I always use my little notepad on my phone, whatever I need to use to make sure I get the information, I'll use it. And you can also download this podcast. You can download each of them. I encourage that because with that, you can save it. You can play it back whenever you want to, and you can just have it at your fingertips. So with that, I also want to tell you guys, the three hashtags that we're rolling with for this series is Queen Me Now, Grow, Glean, Glow, and Live Your Authentic Purpose. So without further ado, we are jumping into day one of the Queen Me series, five simple yet essential tips for the single queen. So now we're jumping on to day one. Day one is be a light. Are you glowing? And today's scripture is from Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What's more beautiful than a woman, ladies? Think about it. One of the biggest assets that many women are completely unaware of is their God-given glow. You know, you literally were born with this glow. We all were, uh, y'all. All of us women, God had put this thing in us so dope, so amazing. And it's a shame because if you were to take a moment and ask yourself, how brightly do you shine? What would that be? How would you answer that question? Like, And what I mean by that is, Do you really give yourself the opportunity to shine as bright as you can? Do you really position yourself for people to see the light that God has placed in you? Do you really, really do that? So I want to unpack that today because I want want you to really just think about some things as we try to get to the bottom of your light. Now, 
you know, in 2017, y'all, I hate it. But some of you I know will agree with me. So many women are lost and looking for something in the world that God has already put inside of them. You know, nowadays women are basing a, their, uh, their worth in men, social media, what other people think about them and all of these things. And then it just came to my attention. I was like, you know what, Robin, you need to check your light. I had to check my own light. So that's what I ask you now. That's the first thing we're going to attack. You need to check your light. Is there anything like a bad relationship, a foul mouth, a bad attitude? Are you living in the past? Are you obsessed about something because your, your, your focus is off? Are you accept, uh, Are you obsessed about someone? You know, are you just, you, you have tunnel vision on somebody because you think they're going to be your person? Are you focused on somebody who you think they're not being a good friend? Are you focused on this, focused on that? Like just broken focus. Are you struggling with any of those things? Even still, check this out. Are you messy? Or do you hang with messy people? Do you seem to attract a lot of drama? Do you have friends like, are your friendships faulty? Do you have lack of purpose? If you told the truth, are you pretty lazy? And you're not really being honest about it? Are you a narcissist? Do you think you're all that? Like, you don't, you can't have a hair out of place. And, you know, it's like life or death if, if the external things aren't in, in place. Think about it. Because look, as women, we don't want a hair out of place. We want to be on point and we should be on point. Let's not get it twisted. We should, we should be doing things along the way that are going to help us blossom into the God-given purpose that he wants to see us walk out in this life. There's things that God wants to see in us. So a lot of times we can't even get to that, y'all, if we have any of those things blocking us. Any of those things. And one of the major things I want to ask you is this. Are you struggling with fear? Are you afraid? Think about it. Are you anxious? The Bible has some choice words about fear and about being anxious and ain't none of them good. So if you anxious for something and if you are fearful as if God can't come in in a clutch and save the day, then guess what? That could be dimming your light and you don't even realize it. That could really be doing a doozy on you and you are not realizing why you feel like you keep chasing your tail or you're running around like a little hamster on a wheel and you can't figure out why. I want you to think about something. What if I told you, even if, let's say you suffered with everything I just said or you suffer with one of the things or you're struggling with some of the things I just called out, right? Wrap your mind around this. No matter what you answer, God will never leave you. He'll never be disappointed in you. And he will never think that you are not a beautiful light for him. Now, how dope is that? You know you're not on your P's and Q's. And the person who made you and gave you the P's and Q's, he's still like, look, I know you're messing it up, but I love you anyway. Like straight up, unconditional, I don't care what you say about yourself, I got you kind of love. Think about that. Just marinate on that for a second. Because here's the thing about it. Even if any of these things are going on and it's causing you to dim your light. You can fix that. Because see, your light may dim for a while or, or it may go out. But you got to recharge your batteries and you have to recharge your spiritual bulbs. You know, like we take a light bulb and we screw it in. Some of y'all. You're going to have to take out the unscrew the light bulb that went out from your old way of thinking. And now you're going to replace it with a new way of thinking. Because now you're going to be thinking with the mindset of seeing yourself the way God does. And perhaps that old bulb went out and your, your, your light, it just, it just looked like it went out. Or you didn't even know it was on. Some of y'all have the light 
already in place, but you didn't hit the switch. You didn't even know you had a light. You had no idea the magnitude or the capacity in which God has put inside of you to really shine bright, not only for him, but for the world. You can shine, the way the world set up, y'all, you can get on social media and hit every country in the world that has the internet. So things are not like they used to be. That's why God is raising up so many of us because he wants our light to shine. And let's think about this for my women who want to be married one day. And I have, this is literally a poll I've taken. When you ask a man about what he loves about his wife and what he loves about that woman, why he thinks she's so dope. Many men will tell you she has a light about her. She has a glow. Like she's shining. That's why today is be a light. Are you glowing? That's precisely why that question is matched with that statement. So even if you're a woman who's preparing to be married, you're not trying to shine for a man. That's not what this is about. But the men that fall for these women, they say, oh no, she was already shining on her own. She already had her light. I'm not talking about having a pretty smile. Nah. I'm talking about being so in tune with actively living a whole healthy life, not just being about Jesus, not just, not just work, doing your work, not just doing whatever you feel like. No, you're balanced. Everything is working in tandem now for you. Everything God has placed, you're focused on Jesus. You got a good balance with your career and your life. You're really trying to get yourself together. That's what I'm talking about. Because when you have that going, that's attractive to a man. And let me tell you, if you're trying to do it to impress him or because you're trying to catch up and measure up to where he's at or you're trying to make sure you got this going on for him to see you, he's going to sniff that out too. That's why this series is important, ladies, because we need to be doing this stuff independent of what a man or any other human being thinks. We need to be working on ourselves because it pleases God. Period. It's a bonus that a man like it. It's a bonus that you can inspire someone else with it. Those are bonuses. We want to focus on the father. Y'all listen and hear me when I say this. If he is not the love of your life, anybody who you think gonna come is not gonna last. Because if you want your relationship to come from the father, he's going to be the only one that can maintain it. And you can't pray no soulish prayers about it. You can't beg and plead and hope and wish. You have to literally do the work within you and keep your focus on Christ in this season, in this hour. Because guess what? You think you got it popping doing that? You think if your focus is over here, your focus is over there, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. Guess what? You are dimming your light. People may just see glimpses of it, but we're talking about legit. God is allowing you to shine on a level that no other human being can help you with. It's literally because you are on one accord with what he's telling you to do for you. Now, typically it's two reasons why a woman doesn't access her light. The first one is she has no idea she has it. And the second one is she don't know how to turn it on. She knows it's there, but she doesn't know what to do with it. She, she has an idea. She knows God has made her royalty. She knows she's a queen in a kingdom. She's a king's kid, but she has no idea how to finesse it. She don't know how to do it. So here's the thing. This is a perfectly imperfect journey. I say that statement all the time. I've been saying it for years. I literally have a t-shirt. You can buy my t-shirt. That's a shameless plug. <laughs> but I have a t-shirt at thejazzybrand.com. It says perfectly imperfect if you want it. And that too is based on scripture too. There's a scripture that talks about being perfectly imperfect. And this is what this is about, y'all. Listen, even on your worst day in God's eyes, you still shine brighter than the sun, y'all. Hear me on that. Because, look, you are the real prize, sis. You're the real prize. 
Some of y'all, you may not believe it right now, but I want you to start by saying this prayer. God, help me to see myself the way you do. It may not happen overnight, Father, but keep saying it until you believe it. Let's do it one more time. God, help me see myself the way that you do. God, help me see myself the way that you do. God, help me see myself the way that you do. Like I said, it might not happen overnight, but y'all, you got to get your light popping. You got to let your light shine. You got to. You don't have, you don't have a choice at this point. Because if you're trying to live your authentic purpose, if you're really trying to rise up to the call that God has on your life, then it's time to level up. And that's what this next part is. It's time to act now and level up. Are you glowing? So let me ask you your three level up questions. Number one, how do you view yourself when nobody is looking? Marinate on that. Number two, check your tank. What's keeping you from leveling up and shining? What are you putting in your tank? What are you filling yourself up with? Who are you talking to? Are you talking to a hater? Do you have that friend who, who's the nasty friend? She nasty, nasty to you. Do you have that guy friend who, you know, he just talks about foolishness and, 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 and buffoonery and you over there entertaining them? Are you around a group of people who are not adding value to your life? Or... On the flip side, are you filling your tank with foolishness? What you watching on TV? What you listening to? You may have to start weaning some of that stuff out because it's causing you to dim your light. It's causing you not to shine because it's giving you blemishes and spots and you don't realize it. Again, if you always do what you always did, then you always get what you always got. Number three, describe your glow. Can you even recognize it? What's your thing that, that makes you get it popping? What's your, what's your thing that you know? You could be down in the dumps. You could be sad and boom, you hit that switch. You turn that light on. Do, can you even identify that? Because if you can't, today is going to be the day where you start. Because even with everything that was said today, that's the whole point of me making sure that I added the, not only the level up questions, but I wanted to make sure you had the call to action. Those of you who printed out the ebook, pull out your sheet, be a light, three personal glow goals. So this is what I want you to do with this sheet. I want you to really ask yourself, am I really shining or am I stunting like I'm shining? What does shining look like to you? When you see somebody be like, oh, boy, she's shining, boy, she got it going on. When you compliment another woman shining, what does that look like for you? When you, What attributes does she have that make you say that about her? But then you look at yourself and may say, man, I got to do this, I got to do that. And then you feel inadequate about yourself. There's a, there's a disconnect right there. So that's what I want to call out. Because I'm not only wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose and inspire you to be cultivated as a queen, but I'm also here for impartation. And I want to impart to you the desire to bust up anything that's causing you to not be a whole woman. And with that being said, you're going to have to write down some goals so that you can begin to make an earnest effort to shine. Some people say, oh, you just shine. Well, guess what? Just like with anything else, it needs to grow. It needs to cultivate. You may be born with hair, but you still have to comb it, right? You may be given a body, but you still have to eat to keep yourself alive, right? Well, it's no different with your light. You don't just, you know, yeah, some people just have that genesis quiet as something special. Some people just have that it factor. But even when you have the it factor, even when you have that something special, you still have to cultivate your gift. You ever see somebody say, oh my God, like, I know she's going to be a star. Guess what? She may have to get to a place in her life where she may have to take acting classes. She's still a natural born, born star, but she's cultivating a gift. 
I'm a songwriter. We see it all the time with your favorite singers, y'all. Some of the best people you see singing right now on a nationwide international stage, they have voice coaches. They don't have voice coaches because they can't sing. They have voice coaches because they can sing. They just teach them how to use what they have. So that's what I'm telling you about your light today, ladies. I want you to shine as bright as you possibly can. So again, make sure you check out the scripture, Matthew 5, 16. It gives you the instructions spiritually on how to shine. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. You are supposed to shine because it's going to add value to the kingdom of God. It's a bonus when we get perks from shining. It's a bonus when somebody else likes it. But the thing that we should be focused on is shining for the Lord. And y'all, you're going to feel so much better. Because when you put your focus on pleasing him and not pleasing other people, your load gets lighter. It absolutely gets lighter. So I hope that you guys were able to really kind of Begin the process of trying to figure out what it is you have to do to shine as the woman that God has called you to be. And with that being said, it's taking us to my favorite part of the series. And this is our married moment. Now, this is a wonderful woman of God. She's married with several children. And this is the bit of advice that she's given to me to give to you singles, you single queens who are looking forward to getting married. All right. So this first part is for the actual single lady. And the first thing she says is this. She says, while you prepare as a single woman, learn as much as possible about yourself. Write down the things that make you the happiest and write down the things that make you the saddest and figure out exactly who you are and what you want from a marriage. That is a really, really big thing, ladies. So many women are getting caught up on focusing on this man that they either think they know or the man that they know is coming and they putting way too much energy into that. You are not paying attention to what you like and what you, what you like and what you don't like. And trust me, many women have told me they had it all wrong going in. So when she gave me this word, it was a confirmation because I heard it before. So again, make sure that you are more focused on what you need to be doing for you and understanding your likes and dislikes. Now, once this man reveals himself, once you guys begin the courting process, she says to begin to pay attention to him. Make sure that he's open about his dreams, his thoughts, and his ambitions because that's going to make it a lot easier for you while you're courting and you'll know what you're getting into before you get married. And because he's already setting the tone for, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, it's just going to make for a much more fruitful situation for the two of you so yes i love that advice i think it is super dope super super awesome and it'll be the first tip that you can write down to save for this week because it's really great tips the whole week from our married ladies and i just pray that it'll bless you in some sort of way i pray that you can begin to set the tone for what you want your future to look like and don't forget guys make sure you get like journals and stuff like that you know, I thought the advice she gave was excellent about making sure you write down those things about yourself. That happy and sad thing, I thought that that was really amazing because you could really begin to figure some things out. And check this out. When you start writing down the things that make you sad, you might say, man, you know what? I might need to go heal some of these wounds. I may have to forgive this person or that person, and that's going to bless you. You won't be taking that baggage into your marriage. So again, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful I really am so appreciative and I'm so grateful that you guys joined me today. I want you to make sure you come back for the rest of the week. Tomorrow is be a queen and I cannot wait to have that discussion with you. So again, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Remember, I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'm Wired to Inspire dot com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.